couldn't pay our bills. Uh, we had our water shut off. We were ready to close the doors for good. It was so long, I felt like nobody cared about me and my daughter. A year of exceptional need. What came through was a 2,000 degree freight train. When you have to leave in such a hurry, you just forget things. Leads to a year of exceptional generosity. How are you feeling? I'm okay. <laughs> Kindness that cannot be masked. Are you serious? That's beautiful. Denver 7 Gives viewers prove that no amount of distance can break the bonds of community. When our community reached out for help, you came through in ways we could not have even imagined. We hear it all the time. 2020 is a year we'd like to forget, just erase from our memories. But let's change that perspective and instead remember what we were able to do for one another together and dollar by dollar. Denver 7 Gives is a 501c3 through the Scripps Howard Foundation, created to fill the needs in our community, a need that has grown exponentially during this pandemic. In 2020, you, our viewers, raised more than a half million dollars to support Coloradans in need. You paid off rent, purchased groceries for families struggling to make ends meet, helped purchase cars, scooters, even adaptive bikes. You covered the cost of overwhelming medical bills and supported several nonprofits. There is no better example of the Colorado spirit than your response to this year's historic wildfire season. Well over 600,000 acres burned, destroying more than 500 homes, businesses, and other buildings. Today, you have raised more than $300,000 for the victims and first responders with the help of our partners in Larimer, Boulder, and Grand Counties. Our first order of business, making sure evacuees didn't go hungry. Here is Denver 7 reporter Jacqueline Allen. At the Doubletree in Westminster, right. Denver 7 crews come bearing gifts. There's drinks and coffee over here, too. A hot breakfast. These are garden veggie, and those are ham and Swiss. And a kind word. This all started when Contact Denver 7 found out fire evacuees like Louisa Hudson had their hotel rooms paid for by the Red Cross, but not their meals. When you have to leave in such a hurry, you just forget things. And the last thing on your mind is food, but then you get somewhere and then you have to have food. Thanks to generous donations from viewers to our Denver 7 Gives Wildfire Victims Fund, we brought in breakfast. We got lunch. And lunch for more than 140 fire evacuees. A sign, Chris Hayden says, of support. As far as I'm concerned, that's the golden strand that runs through all of this. This is the first time, like I said, I've been on the receiving end and I'm just blown away by the outpouring of generosity and kindness. Awesome just to see all the stuff laid out on the tables. Definitely um, keeps people positive. Thank you, Denver 7 Gives, for coming through for us. This has been amazing. And that was just one of many needs met during the evacuations. Diane Temple managed to evacuate from the East Troublesome Fire, but only with the shirt on her back. And despite it all, we found her hard at work stocking the shelves at the Grand Lake Mountain Market. We're doing the best. I may wear the same clothes every day for the next couple of weeks and rinse them out at night, but we're going to make it. Your donations allowed Denver 7 Gives to go shopping. Thanks to the generosity of our Denver 7 Gives viewers, we went shopping for you. And this is all for you. This is a full outfit for you and your husband. Oh Sweatshirt, jeans and socks. Oh, they're gorgeous. Thank you so very much. It's so appreciated. It'll be nice to have a nice warm shirt. We really appreciate it. This is so awesome. Thank you so, so much. So, sorry. <laughs> Diane considers herself one of the lucky ones. Her family's home was saved. We also met firefighters on the front line, saving homes as the flames threatened their own. Some, like the crew with the Risk Canyon Fire Protection District, amazed us with their selflessness, dropping everything to volunteer. Denver 7's Gary Broad dropped them a visit to share our collective appreciation. Taylor Clifton is one of the newest additions to the Risk County Volunteer Fire Department. As the Cameron Peak Fire was forcing people away, Clifton ran towards the flames, joining the department in mid-October, helping to save as many structures as he could. What came through was a 2,000 degree freight train. That freight train made a stop at Clifton's home. The fire was moving so quickly, there was really nothing we could do to get into my neighborhood. So at that time, I mean, we just focused on trying to protect everything around there. This video shows the flames consuming Clifton's property. I don't know where to go. It's taken my home, it's taken my business, it's taken everything. Even while dealing with the loss, Clifton and the rest of his fellow firefighters kept fighting. They are tired, ragged, our trucks are breaking down. We still ask them, 
can you go out again tomorrow? We need you to, everybody jumps up. Risk Canyon Fire Chief Jeff Elsner says the efforts have taken a toll, not just on the crew, but also the equipment, like this truck, with a siren that doesn't work. As a volunteer fire department, most resources used for the wildfires came out of their own limited funds. If we burned up a hose, it was our own hose that burned up. On behalf of the Denver 7 Gives Fund, we're here to present this check of $5,000 to the Risk Canyon Volunteer Fire Department. On behalf of all of us here at Denver 7, we want to thank you all for everything you do. Keep up the great work. Hopefully this helps. Thank you. Thank you, thank you and much. it will. Thank you so much. This money right here is going to help us re-outfit our trucks. And it's amazing to see the community come together and help us out and give. From there, the donations continued to pour in. You wanted to do even more for the victims. So Denver 7 Gives harnessed the power of this community to take it a step further, deploying our teams to Larimer and Grand Counties for the biggest surprises to date. Russell Haythorne and Jacqueline Allen highlight days of giving starting in Larimer County. All right, come on along. Our day started at McGuckin Hardware in Boulder. McGuckin Hardware has been in business for 65 years, where you get a large selection. Where Barry Height and his team know the value of community. Yeah. It's sad when people lose their houses in fire. We've had that happen here in Boulder. We did some shopping for fire victims at McGuckin, where they gave us a 10% discount on everything from rakes to shovels to screwdriver sets and other tools. I'll just push it with then it was on to Walmart, where the managers of five stores in Larimer County donated nearly two truckloads of bedding, pillows, food, and countless other items. Nobody ever wants to be out homeless, you know, losing your own home. The guys at Two Men and a Truck Moving helped us transport all of the items from McGuckin and those Walmart stores to the donation center in Loveland. We filled a 26-foot truck with food and blankets and all that kind of stuff. Those Denver 7 Gives donations are now here at the distribution center at the outlet shops in Loveland, where June Spaulding and her team from the Seventh Day Adventist Disaster Recovery Center have a place for wildfire victims to come and shop. It looks like a store, so they can come in and shop. A place where victims can get the basics. And it doesn't only just last two months or six months. For some people, it takes a while to recover. And if they're rebuilding, there's also added stress with that. Denver 7 Gives was able to cap a day of giving with this. Check for $75,000 to the United Way of Larimer County. How are these families affected by COVID too? That's another layer that we're also working with in this disaster. Some people are already displaced from work. And so these kind of funds help people get back on their feet. A day of giving thanks to you, the generous donors of Denver 7. All right, let's go do some Christmas shopping. In the spirit of the season. All right, we're starting with the Dutch oven. A shopping spree to replace what was lost. There we go. Using your generous donations to Denver 7 Gives, we pick up the supplies. Shopping. That help make a house a home. So they made their list. We checked it twice. Add in a little holiday spirit. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. And we are heading to the mountains. Where Clint and Stacy Young deserve a break. In October, the log cabin Clint hand built 20 years ago was right in the path of the Cameron Peak fire. We were voluntarily evacuated on Labor Day weekend, and we packed up a bunch of stuff. Were you able to get everything that was important to you? I got her. <laughs> <laughs> they made it. Their home didn't. Now they're determined to rebuild. Hand mixer. With a car full of things they said they needed and a few just for fun. We wanted you to have a little holiday spirit. Plus thoughtful donations to warm the spirit. This is from a sewing circle out of Johnstown. They actually handmade oh. these blankets. I love blankies. Yes. <laughs> but as they rebuild, they also need supplies. This check is to help pay off some of the money you've already spent on building supplies. Wow. Holy cow. Awesome. Thanks to Denver 7 Gives donations, a GoFundMe, and their neighbors, this garage rebuild is well underway. I was absolutely amazed that Denver 7 uh, Gives even asked me what I needed and what I wanted. It just really shows you how good people are. And there are so many good people. 
and it's truly amazing. 24 hours later, it was off to Grand County. Our day started with a blanket delivery to Grand Lake Fire Protection District. Blankets made by a group of ladies on the front range, which will go in ambulances here to keep patients and kids warm. And keeping them there for children and giving them out as we have with teddy bears and things like that. At the fire station, we met some of the guys who were working the night the East Troublesome Fire blew up. Put in a lot of work that night. I think Chief said it was 53 hours straight. When you're in that state of mind, you don't get tired. You just keep going. <laughs> this department lost a lot of hoses and other equipment in the fire. On behalf of Denver 7 and our generous viewers, we'd like to present the Grand Lake Fire Protection District and Chief St. Germain with this check for $10,000. Few words that I can actually say that thank both Channel 7 and your guys' viewers for this incredibly generous check. Our next stop was the Mountain Family Center in Granby, where they've served dozens of victims so far with clothing, a food pantry, and other items. The toy shop is certainly good for families this time of year. We have games and puzzles. Dave Lively is one of those fire victims inspired by the community response. I almost don't have words for it. We are telling people we lost our house, but we haven't lost our home, and this is a big part of that. Um, my home is in Grand Lake, but my community is all of Grand County. A county served by the Grand Foundation, so we wanted to support them. Megan, we'd like to present you with this check for $75,000 from Denver 7 Gives. Thank you so much. Grand Foundation Executive Director Megan Ledeen says this will certainly serve the community well. We have immediate needs, short-term needs, and long-term needs. We're going to be funding out of the wildfire fund which this puts us over $2.6 million, so thank you so much. And we didn't stop there in Grand County. Your donations also purchased gift cards and work boots for fire victims. We also paid a surprise visit to the Columbine Lake community, which saw dozens of homes destroyed. We lost our bobcat that serves as a plow and all of our equipment. Yeah. Well, on behalf of Denver 7 and our generous viewers, Denver 7 Gives would like to present the Columbine oh, Lake HOA with a check for $5,000. Thank you, Russell. Thank yes. you, Channel 7. It means a lot. Thanks for helping us rebuild our community. Your generosity will continue to make a difference in the weeks and months ahead. To give, head to the DenverChannel.com, click on Denver 7 Gives, and look for Help Colorado Wildfire Victims in the drop-down menu. Denver 7 Gives, your generosity is just getting started. Ahead, you help a COVID-19 survivor keep a roof over her head. Instead of a, like, oh my God, what am I gonna do in a negative way? It's, oh wow, what do I do with all of this now? You bring holiday cheer to families faced with an unimaginable loss. And you deliver a message from home for our troops overseas. They're not just getting a card, they're getting a message from us saying, we care about you. The COVID-19 pandemic has created unimaginable hardship in our community. When we spoke with the families of those who contracted the virus while working at the JBS meatpacking facility, we just knew we had to do more. Tin Ai moved her family to this country from a refugee camp in Thailand more than a decade ago. She contracted COVID-19 in late March and never recovered. And then her family faced the next tragedy. They could not afford to bury her. And you raised enough money for a beautiful site to remember this wife, mother, and new grandmother. It means a lot, a lot to us. We can come visit to my mom and especially from little Felix and um, a memory from Felix. The staff at Fairmont Cemetery offered a discount, allowing us to help with the family's mortgage and groceries. You also came through for Ravi Terman. Now, she beat COVID-19 only to face the financial impact of this pandemic. She was on the brink of homelessness until you stepped in to help. Gary Brode delivered this surprise. There's been a dramatic change in Ravi Terman's life since we last saw her December 3rd. Instead of a, like, oh my God, what am I going to do in a negative way? It's, oh wow, what do I do with all of this now? After nearly dying from COVID in April, she lost her job, lost her home, and her car no longer works. For so long, I felt like... Nobody cared about me and my daughter. Even though I survived the COVID, I was like, I felt like we were all alone. When we met Terman just five days ago, she was down on her luck. She and her daughter ran out of money and were going to be homeless by Wednesday. I just need help. I just want, I just want help. 
Thanks to you, our Denver 7 viewers, she got it. I had nowhere to go, but now I got somewhere I got, I, I got some place to go. One Denver 7 viewer even offered to let Ravi and her daughter stay in his vacant rental property. He was like, well, yeah, uh, you can stay in the, in the condo as long as you want. We'll even paint it for you, whatever colors you want. Another viewer offered to fix her car. To pick me and who am I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing. And Colorado's generosity didn't stop there. Over $20,000 oh has been raised under your name in the Denver 7 Gives Fund. With that money, Ravi plans to furnish her new place, pay off her car, and finally get her belongings shipped from her old state of Indiana to her new state, Colorado. $20,000. That much money in my life. You saw my bank account right now. I got $2. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I can't believe you people in Denver. You guys are amazing. I love you. Our viewers also rallied around Vietnam veteran Jeffrey Paulson. His scooter was stolen during the protest in Denver over the summer. Your donations allowed us to buy him a new one with all the bells and whistles and a better lock and alarm. I'm serious. That's beautiful. I don't believe it. It's overwhelming. I'm overwhelmed. Oh, my God. I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. In the months since, your donations have covered his rent. Jeffrey used the money saved to buy a car. Then your generosity covered the cost of some much needed repairs. This year, we also met little Esteban. He was seriously hurt when a car came crashing into his Aurora backyard. His family faced a months long recovery and mounting medical debt. Your donations helped offset those costs, covering the family's rent for five months. I can't say thank you enough. We just were greatly appreciative of all the help we got and love from everybody for Esteban that's helped out when he was in the hospital. I said that was me. It was you. Yeah. You feeling better now? Yeah. Was it scary? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It hurts. And your donations allowed us to deliver a wonderful Christmas surprise for Monica Torres and her seven younger siblings after the tragic death of their mother. Here's Jacqueline Allen. I guess it's just still nice to have a tradition that makes us feel that our mom is still with us. The first Christmas without someone you love is never easy. I got a call at 5 a.m. in the morning and um. They told me that my mom wasn't breathing. When we told you about the Torres family last month. I have seven younger siblings and one older sibling. 19 year old Monica was worried about paying bills and the holidays after her mother's sudden death. They're trying to be adults. Adulting is hard. Greg Morellis is a youth advocate with Adams 12 Five Star Schools. He learned these kids were struggling with a $1,600 unpaid water bill. They knew that they, when mom was gone, that they'd have to stick together and they'd done that. So he reached out to the Butterfly Foundation. They knew that I needed a groundswell of support. That's where Denver 7 gives generous viewers come in. The Butterfly Foundation promised to match our first $2,500 in viewer donations. But on this day, we get to deliver the surprise, starting with a check from the Thornton Firefighters Union. We heard of your story and of the sacrifice that you're all making. And another check from the Thornton Police Union. Santa came early. Thornton Police and Islanding Direct asked for the family's Christmas wish list and checked off every single item. That was a big hit. For nine-year-old Jason, the magic of Christmas bringing much-needed joy and the one present he wanted. Baby Yoda, and it was my thing that I only wanted for Christmas. Of course, this all started with a water bill. The Butterfly Foundation took care of that. I am here to tell you, I went online. I paid that bill. Your balance is zero dollars. <laughs> the generosity just keeps coming. Colorado Auto Finders, finding and helping pay for a new used car. This is your new car. So Thank much. you guys. Thank you. Denver 7 Gives viewers wanted to make sure this family is taken care of for a long time to come. I wanted to let you know that we will have $35,000 in a trust. I don't want you to be stressed for another day. We got you. I just want to say thank you. Things have been really hard since we lost our mom, but I'm starting to think that this, we're just going to only come up from here. <laughs> Not just your family loves you. You have a lot of people love you, and that's just more than 
the whole world. To the Denver 7 Gives viewers, I just want to say that I'm so grateful for every single one of you. In Thornton. It will change our life forever. We're always going to remember this. Jacqueline Allen for Denver 7 Gives. You also helped the Malik family get through a difficult holiday season. Their father, Alan, passed away from cancer Thanksgiving morning. Your donations to Denver 7 Gives helped the family pay for his funeral. And the community rallied to deliver a little Christmas magic, complete with gifts, lights on their home, and a special visit to the zoo. Oh, beautiful. I, thank you. <laughs> you guys, I'm so grateful on behalf of my family because I feel that we're not alone. One amazing woman, 40,000 Christmas cards. You come through with the one thing she still needed. I can't stop it. It's in my blood. We cannot fit all that you did through Denver 7 Gives into 30 minutes. Through your giving, we were able to help local hero Akio Clark, who lost his eye while saving a neighbor from a violent assault. The money you raised allowed him to get a new prosthetic eye and glasses. You helped the Wyoming family get home after their handicapped van was stolen in Denver. Their neighbors bought them a new van, so you paid the title, registration, and insurance. You also covered the family's rent and eventually helped get their stolen van out of impound ship back to their home and your donations to Denver 7 gives to the tune of more than nine thousand dollars saved Aurora's only VFW post hit hard by the pandemic and now more than ever our veterans need a place to gather just the camaraderie uh, working together laughing together uh, and getting stuff done that we think is very very important and in this season of giving, you pulled off another surprise, one year in the making. Tens of thousands of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have a Christmas card from home, thanks in part to your generosity and the work of one remarkable woman. Russell Haythorn has her story. If dedication to a passion. Nothing would be anything without her. Okay, and away we go, folks. Distinguishes a champion from a crowd. This is just an amazing thing that she does. Marlis Hallbison just might be that one who stands out. They're not just getting a card. They're getting a message from us saying, we care about you. For the past three years, she's transformed her Wheat Ridge home into a smaller version of Santa's workshop. Sending you love and prayers. A passion project. My husband was in the military and in, and guarded the Van Berg Gate in Berlin. In 2018, she personalized 2,700 Christmas cards for troops overseas. Last year, 18,000. And this year... How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. I heard you did a whole bunch this year. 40,000. 40,000? Yeah. Pandemic was good. <laughs> we first introduced you to Marlis last year when the company she lined up to ship the cards simply vanished. 18,000 smiles are sitting in my front room, and we need to get them delivered. The USA SOA in Washington has said it can get the cards overseas for about $1,700. That is our issue. Just a few nights after that story aired, Denver 7 viewers came to the rescue. She wrote a check for $1,750. There are angels here on earth, let me tell you. You donated so much money to our Denver 7 Gives Fund last year. We told 78-year-old Marlis <laughs> we would not only pay for the shipping again this year, but we'd pay for the Christmas cards this time, too. <laughs> We should have had a good idea at that point what she was capable of. We did not. After visiting three stores, I bought 35,000 cards. She's also received about 5,000 donated cards. Cards come every day. Yesterday, I got a bag of cards. The plan this year was to have multiple card writing parties. We were going to have everybody for the fun night write cards. Well, of course, the pandemic prevented that. And yet somehow, this 78-year-old would find the silver lining. It was wonderful. I was never bored. Everybody said, oh, I'm so bored. And they go, well, why don't you write some cards? <laughs> it's also been said you can't expect everyone to have the same dedication as you. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, I was taught that you find the best help at the end of your arms. And so it was. This one-woman show. Just Christmas cards. Who amazed us last year did it again this year. Beyond proud. I mean, this has just given her even more. 
don't cry, because <laughs> you're going to make me cry. 40,000 cards. I can't stop it. It's in my blood. Now they're on their way to soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines overseas. This does make such a huge difference in a GI's life, you know? I mean, you get a card from home, you know, it just it just makes you feel good. It just brightens your day. With photojournalist Drew Smith. Hopefully it just keeps spreading. Just spread love. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Thank you doesn't even cover what you did for one another, Colorado. None of this would be possible without your donations. To give, head to the DenverChannel.com and click Denver 7 Gives. And there you can watch the stories of Coloradans in need and donate if you feel so moved. And once again, thank you. We cannot wait to see all the good we're able to do together in 2021.